Hey everyone, welcome to the first Battle Breakdown video. And today, our video is going to be uh, Class versus Watla here on Corellia. Now, before I press play on this replay, I'm going to use this time to discuss my reasoning for the lineup I took, as well as what to do when you are too down on a match like this and still really want to win it. So, we knew that we were too down. Um, we're running five Legionnaires here. And eight clan members giving us 13 players against their uh, 15 total. So when I'm down in a battle, and I'll go over this more as we run through the replay, instead of sacrificing in multiple areas, instead I choose to sacrifice in one and keep the other one strong. So when I make this initial call, you'll see it and I'll point it out. I believe that, you know, as with, with my calling experience, that when you're down, you should not play it any differently than if you weren't down because if your strategy is affected by that, you're going to make mistakes doing something that you're not familiar with. So again, sacrifice a little bit in one area. Again, it's just two tanks. It's not that bad. Um, you can make up for that pretty easily. The hit point disadvantage is the hard part. And then work on it from there. Let's hit play on this and I'll show you my initial call. So as you saw from the thumbnail, you saw a screenshot of the call that I like to use here. Again, it's not the call I use all the time, but you can see me initially looking around, seeing where everybody's laid out, and I'm calling for tanks to sit right in that gap at J5, K5. That's going to cover the kilo line. So let's pause it for a second. I'm going to be doing a lot of that this video, which is going to make it probably about a 20-minute video. The idea here on this strat, if you can follow my mouse as I hold control here, um, is that the hill is a often point of contention on this map, and a area where most of the conflict happens so the strategy that I developed here is instead of taking the hill allowing them to have it but making that area effectively useless and keeping everybody out of the render range so the enemy's render range is about to here so what we're going to do is we're going to set tanks up you know both you can see where my last map click is two of my heavy tanks normally I would have four heavies in this gap and there is a medium up here to cover. This time we're just going to use two. So this is the point where I'm sacrificing those two tanks. Everything else is still the same. We have an extra leopard, which wasn't supposed to happen. One of these leopards was supposed to be a regular medium. But, you know, it's all right. You know, we can work with that lineup. You know, changes or, or screw-ups happen. The one medium is going to overwatch. Now, this medium is going to watch anything coming down this way. Because with this lineup... I'm looking and I see a lot of 907s and a decent amount of fast heavies. So while this doesn't definitively say hill, most teams do not just ignore the hill. It's it's the hill is a major way to play this. So the idea here is that the enemies come through, they sit on the hill, there's nothing here, and then they push up. When they try and push up, they're gonna run into these heavies and they're gonna have to dig out those three tanks. Again, normally it would be a third of the team, now it's a fourth total. We're going to have a couple of mediums fanned out, one chieftain in the middle, and this chieftain is going to proxy spot, and everybody else is going to start heading up this way. And as this timer counts down, you'll see there's a bit of a initial screw-up as well. I don't fully know whose fault it is, but it doesn't matter as long as it get, gets corrected. Again, pause. When the call gets screwed up or people don't go where they're supposed to, the worst thing you can do is panic. You have to correct it as quickly as possible. Otherwise, you know, nothing is actually going to be achieved other than, you know, confusion and frustration. So you can see I'm starting to head up the one line with the other chieftains. And actually, all right, so a bit of a bit of a miss. Uh, I misspoke a little bit there. The battle that I actually thought this was was there was one where we weren't we did not go down there however in this case we actually do go there and it's not a problem but you know what i said there is still applicable you know in a lot of scenarios so the first order of business again pause we have two ebrs against one ebr and a mana core so the first thing we need to do is get that flush that mana core out of there because if that mana core sits there any ebr who has to run through there and clear that guy out is going to you know, we're not, he's going to spot all of our rotations and we're not going to be able to do anything. And if our EBR tries to run through that, we're going to have a problem. Great shot there by one stop, blind firing there and killing that mana core. That's a huge play. 
My driving is terrible. Please ignore that part of the video. So you can see as everybody's starting to get set up, one EBR kind of gets stuck in the middle. The Kronwagen is, is set up underneath the hill. Now, I like the Kronwagen because if an EBR spots tanks coming down this way or on top, the Kronwagen can get three easy shots, unlike the Chieftain, which may only be able to get one or two. The Kronwagen also has a lot of great gun depression, and it's a little bit smaller. So, noting that there's nothing up here, I'm going to personally pull back. I'm redirecting a Leopard over to the Kilo line where he should have been. Should have been. He, and here's another thing. This is, there's going to be a lot of this on the first one. A call should not be vague, but it shouldn't be too specific. You need to give room for your players to move around and do what they need to do. So this Leopard was over here. If the Leopard was over here on the K-line to begin with, what is he going to shoot? Nothing's going to be coming down here. Most teams do not. It's maybe 1% to 2% of the time that the team will roll through and just ignore the hill entirely. So that Leopard made a good play. You know, sit out here, let's work on some of the lights and mediums that we get lit, and then I'll rotate over to my spot. All right, unpause. Ed is over there in the middle, pretty aggressive spot. And one stout finishes off their second light. So he's two for two now. Obviously a very good player, as you can see, they're looking at his clan. Now I'm going to join HKaz over here because I believe that HKaz may need, or sorry, um, that Hawks up there may need extra help. You know, teams will sometimes push low side. Yep, you can see me clicking it there. May push low side and try and get underneath. And this Kronwagen can't actually spot it because there's a rock in the way. So HKaz and I are going to try and look for some shots on this 279. Unfortunately, it gets unlit. I know that CS is about to go down. That shot goes wide to the left and not much there. Now, now look at, look at the score now if we look in the top, right? I played this basically the same as I would any other game in terms of calling it except for those two tanks, and we're up 2-0 to zero now. So, technically, it's not 2-0, to because take our score and subtract it by 2, since we're shoot too short. So we're even right now. We are down 2,800 hit points, but that's nothing. And both of our EBRs are in pretty good health, at least half. So now we're just hanging out. We're actually... I don't... We're on defense here, I believe. Yes, we're on defense. So we're just kind of hanging out for right now. The enemy has to make a play. They have a lot of medium tanks. So whenever they do decide to push, those mediums are going to be easier targets than a bunch and a whole bunch of heavies. We've got great map control. You can see that we've there's no enemy past the seven line, and they started on the nine. So their advance is very short. They do have the ability to break out to about the five six, but you know, and while we are short over here, the chieftains are all downhill except for the GH area. So we can easily get back up, occupy the ridge line at Juliet 1. So I'm not worried about it. That's why I'm allowing those chieftains to play over there. Now, the enemy decides that they're going to make their move. Let's talk about this push as they make it. And we're going to ignore my horrible play here over the next few minutes. Because I'm so focused on calling, this is kind of what happens. The enemy have decided to make a run up this alpha line. Now, we have a 907 cross-firing. We have chieftains up here. We don't have a lot of chieftains, but this whole enemy team has to go uphill. So my personal thought is, you know, I'm just going to sit over here and deal with it, but at the same time, I'm trying to call it. I'm looking for an arty strike, but I don't know if they ever intend on stopping. Now, simultaneously, pause. I'm going to have these tanks push up the hill. Now, what do we have over there? We have an IS-7, a Super Conqueror, and a Leopard 1. So how do I know that they're not going to get overmatched? Well, let's take a look at what's unspotted here so actually it won't work from there so we are missing uh the mana core these three tanks are dead we're missing one 907 two 907s the 277 and we know there was a cs up there everything else is lit so the worst that could be up there is a 277 two 907s and the cs who's likely still there the 277 probably isn't up there. Why would he be over here if all the fast heavies are pushing that way? So we can get rid of the 277. So two 907s and a CS. We have one medium, a leopard. While it's not a, a medium that should be brawling, we have two heavies going with it. I trust that three-on-three -three matchup. I also know who's in those vehicles, and I'm pretty confident that they can take care of that issue. 
So no worries there. Again, you know, you want to have a one and a half to two overmatch. However, a one on one is okay, especially when it's heavy against mediums in a confined environment. If it's not a confined environment, it's not going to work. All right, let's keep it rolling. Now, I'm going to make a, another misplay. You can see me holding the forward button there as I'm trying to drop the arty. No idea what I was thinking. Trying to back up to get a lung here, but not going to do much. I'm just getting tracked and tracked and tracked. And now I just realized I have to dump the arty. And that arty is dropped way too late. So it's going to do very minimal. You can see me kind of palm sweaty there. The arty does a couple of... Actually, it doesn't do any damage. And now the chieftains are going to have to hold that off. So now I'm working back, and now I make another misplay. I turn around in the middle of the field. Don't turn around in the middle of the field. All right? Call or not, because now I've got a busted engine and vision device, and I just lost a whole bunch of hit points. I'm now down to a two-shot, which means... And, and let's pause it again, because right here I did... One of the things I always say not to do, especially on defense, which is bleeding. And while I was, the intentions were there, as they are with most people, I have done zero damage, and I am down about 1,200. So as I roll in here to help my teammates on the AB1 area, I'm now a two-shot. I could have been mostly full health if I had, first of all, if I hadn't gone up to Charlie 2, and then not turned around in the middle of the field. So you got to think about that because my teammates are relying on me right now to come and help them. They're overmatched 2 to 1 over here. Let's take a look in the south. We have two leopards up here. The leopards cannot... That leopard ba uh, backed off. And the, we still have a Kronwagen over here. But the leopards are a non... I don't want to say like a... They don't engage closely, obviously. So when it comes to sharing hit points... They may have 1,800 hit points, but a lot of tanks don't assume that they're going to get penned every time, and therefore you have some leeway. The Leopard's going to get penned every time, and that's why it's such a risky tank to bring, especially two of them, while you have two lights and you're two down. So, light tanks as well. They don't work well in a confined environment. So now I have to figure out how I'm going to help this or deal with this situation. We have a one-shot chieftain there who's going to cause us problems for the rest of this. But we're up 4 to 2, so we're actually up 2 tanks. And now all the chieftains, now you can see, this is a situation you don't want to be in if we go out. If you kind of look at the angle here, they've got a right angle on us almost, right? They've got a better arc of fire. One thing you always want as a caller is for you to have the um, obtuse angle here. So you can see they have got, if you imagine the circle, at, you know, it's or imagine this as a circle, they have got the greater portion of it, probably about 60, you know, two-thirds of it. We're jammed, or we've jammed ourselves into one-third, which means they can easily flank. The more you surround them, the harder it is for them to get out of it and focus, because, you know, as we look this way, they we're going to get shot on this side. As we look the other way, we're going to get shot on the right side. So I hope that's somewhat clear. It's something that I'd like to do a video on that was actually taught to me by... Uh, a different caller. He called it obtuse and acute angles, actually. Right. Now, we're pretty much in a gun depression game here. The enemies are above us, which is making it very annoying to deal with these 279s. Now, pause again. The Leopards are on free play. Uh, anybody who's in a Leo needs to have an initial call and then be able to identify where they need to go to influence that battle. If a leopard is just sitting in the back, it's not going to do anything. They need to be able to move up, get within range of enemies, and start taking up priority targets, especially when they have flanking fire. The three heavies have basically kicked the mediums out. I wasn't really paying attention because that's not my area. And that's another thing as a caller. You need to focus on your area. You can't be making specific calls for tanks that are out of your render range or not, or let alone, you know, across the map. You should only be focusing on the tanks around you. Everybody else should be given a pretty simple, straightforward task if they're not in your AO. And this is why, as a caller, I believe you need to be with the main force. 
If you're in a, if if you're a call, you either need to be in an arty or in the main push. You should not be in a leopard. That is the worst tank you can be in as a caller because not only can you not see, or you're not with any group, you can't see them, right? And you're sitting way in the back. So all you have to go off of is the mini map. And right now, this is all I see. I see that the IS-7 and the s -Conk are over here and the Kronwagen and that there's a 907 over there. Because they're out of my render range and radio range, I don't know how much health they're actually on. So that's up to them to solve it. The Leopards, I'm not going to micromanage either. I'll let them know, hey, you know, I'd like you to try and, you know, work this area if, you know, we're desperate. But I can't see them. I don't know what their situation is. Same with light tanks. I can ask the light tank, hey, can you get spots in this area? But how they do that is up to them. If we have a specific call that requires that light tank not to get lit, maybe I can give them a route. But that's really just for the first chunk of the game. This right here, everybody around me, this 907, these two chieftains, and this 907 are the group that I'm calling specifically for. Everybody else has to make their own judgment to figure it out. Trying to call 15 tanks with every single order you have is impossible. And all you're going to do is neglect the main force. All right. Semi rant over. All right, now I'm going to work. HCAS is a one shot. I can take a hit from that 907. So I'm willing to take one for HCAS. Now I'm working here. Oh, I need to get out of this view so you can see where I am. I'm going to hit this I-7. Unfortunately, both of them are going to pen this time. However, if we zoom out again, we can see that they've killed the three tanks up high side. And now it's even in terms of the angles, sort of. This chieftain still has the edge, but he's a one-shot. So he's got to be careful about poking. And, you know, we have a chieftain and an out of seven watching the low side. So it's much better than it was before. If the enemies had pushed in, this would have been a different... Um, issue, especially with an IS-7 that was on pretty much full health. If he had pushed in and taken hits, the rest of the team could have come in behind and on the sides and pretty much wiped us out. But they didn't. So now I'm taking a look. Alright, let's go back 15 seconds here so I can point something out. Alright, before I get killed here. So, for a second, I'm not sure if you saw it. Alright. Where am I going to swap to? All right. Remember when I was pointing at this earlier and I said, I don't know if they're on full health or not. They didn't lose all this health recently. Because I'm out of radio range, the hit point counter doesn't update and neither does this. Everybody out of your radio range is assumed to be on the last amount of health they were beforehand. So while this said we were up 5,000 health, right, I come down here, I find Stiglitz and Tank Blocker. Stiglitz is on 6 health. Right, so that's minus 2,500. And tank blocker is down about, you know, a little bit, maybe about to about 60% of his health. So I couldn't see that. Right, and you have to take that into account, especially, because I'm guilty of this, you see your tanks, you're like, push, push, push. You know, go get them. There's just two there, and maybe there's three of you, and they're saying, no, we can't. Right, you don't know their situation. You may have been Stiglitz on six health, and of course he's not going to push in. All right, going back to this high side. Unfortunately, it's that 277 that we were missing up here. And now it's just let's get whatever we can out. Fortunately, we're going to lose both of our chieftains up there. However, we're now up uh, 3,000 health. And we've got them uh, pretty much barricaded in the A1 corner. We still have a light up. We have two tanks running up onto their cap. Two Leopards underneath and a Kronwagen. And the EBR is still up. So, the enemies know that if they have any chance of winning this, they've got to come down the A-line. At this point, I call free play. Now, what is free play? I guess we can just keep this running. Free play means there's no calling for the time being. You know, just do what you want to do. Obviously, whatever you're doing should benefit the team and contribute to a win. So... Stiglitz could drive towards the enemy, but everybody in this battle is a 
fairly experienced player, and he's not stupid. I mean, this is the basic example. If you're low health, you conserve your health. Uh, you don't just drive out there. So we're just going to start wrapping this game up here. The 277s are trying to come back, but even if we didn't have any tanks left, they wouldn't make it back. So it's just 25 seconds. Go kill what you want. The guys on cap are, are shooting at that 277. Now, as this battle comes to a close, I'm just going to reiterate with, I, with what I started with. Just because you are down tanks, you know, 1, 2, Clan Wars even 3, does not mean that all hope is lost. What you just need to do is figure out where where you can sacrifice a tank and uh, and just play it as normal. You know, you're going to lose two tanks somewhere. Play it out. Everybody just got to pen an extra shot, and you're good. All right, so while this was focused on my calling, I'm still going to look at the post game if you want to see. Um, all right, so obviously a victory. You know, a couple of shots in there. Just if you were in this battle, you can kind of see how you did. I'll go down the list here. So you can pause it wherever you are. And uh, this was a great overall one. I hope this pointed out, you know, that if you're looking at calling, that you shouldn't be discouraged by being down one or two. Just stay focused on the battle. Come back against those two vehicles or, or make that back. And uh, don't change your strategy because of it. All right, I hope you enjoyed this one. And I will see you in the next one.